First of all, how are you? Good. Um, the best festival in the world, so yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied. It's been a blast. Fantastic. Yeah, nice people, good music. Meet all my best buddies, so yeah. Is, it, is this like a, a, a day out for you, uh, like a vacation for you? Yeah, yeah you I, I, I usually go here every year, so yeah, okay. it is. Oh, the, even if you're not playing? Yeah. Okay. Well, before we talk about, because you also have a new album out, before we talk about the album, I'd like to go back to the beginning quickly. Um, your very first record, do you remember what that was? Yeah, it was a, it was a mini LP called Hordan uh, Islam. Recorded it back in uh, November of '92 okay. in a small local studio back home, and uh, I seem to remember. I, I, I was like uh, 18 years old. Eva was like 14, mm. and uh, yeah, it, it was like three songs altogether, like 30, 32 minutes or something. So uh, yeah, already back then we had like uh, our songs were like uh, from eight till. 13 minutes. <laughs> so. no, no, I was at the uh, panel just now where you discussed the, the emergence and, and development of Norwegian black metal. So at, at that point, how, what did you consider yourself as? Did you even think about labels or were you just play, uh, making music? Really just making music like, like we're doing nowadays. I mean, uh, labels are not that interesting actually. I mean, mm. uh, some people call us Viking metal, some people call us black metal. I mean, it really isn't that important. I mean, uh, for me, it's like uh, some kind of rock and roll, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I don't give a shit about labels. Uh, I mean, but, but I mean, uh, for us, uh, we, we kind of made a definition uh, back in the days. Uh, like, black metal was like any kind of uh, heavy metal with satanic lyrics, satanic, right. satanic concepts. So it's like Venom was black metal, Merciful Fate was black metal, Danzig was black metal, Bathory was black metal. Enslave was not black metal because we didn't have satanic lyrics. Right. So. And uh, um, because well, you also mentioned in the panel, your influences w were quite different from the, those were the, the uh, bands you just men mentioned were some of the influences, but also very progressive uh, classic rock type uh, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so how did that develop? Where did that come from? The, those initial uh, influences. Well, I mean, we we, we grew up like in. Um, Late 70s and early 80s, so we uh, we had like uh, the first bands we were listening to was obviously Kiss, mm. and later on uh, Iron Maiden and uh, Nazareth, and uh, it was basically the, the cassettes or, or the vinyls that our uh, brothers or sisters had, mm. because they were born in like in the, in the, in the mid 60s. So we will we would steal or borrow that their cassettes. So I mean, the first hard rock uh, bands I was listening to was Kiss, Iron Maiden and Nazareth. Okay. So, and, and later on, I mean, you wanted something more heavy. So we moved into Venom and Universal Fate and uh, also the trash metal, like um, both the American Bay Area trash metal, like Metallica mm. and Slayer and stuff like that, Anthrax, and, but also the Europe, European trash metal that was a little harder, more ag aggressive bands like Sodom and Destruction and Creator. Mm -hmm. And uh, Celtic Frost and uh, Bathory from Sweden. So that, that, that was kind of the thing. I mean, you were always searching for something more extreme. Mm -hmm. And by the time of, uh, I think it was 88, 89, we kind of uh, discovered that there was actually a metal underground okay. with fan scenes and uh, bands releasing demo tapes and stuff like that. So that was like, like uh, and we ordered like magazines, fan scenes from all over the world, you know? mm. and then we would go uh, finding like flyers, and you know, oh wow, it's a black metal band or a death metal band from Finland, it's a black metal band from Poland. So we were ordering tapes from all over the world, and then suddenly we decided we have to do, well, I mean, we have, we have, to, we have to pick up some instruments and, and, and play some, play some extreme mu music ourselves. Where in this timeline did you start playing yourself? Uh, my first band was a really shitty trash metal band called Insanity. I was probably around 89 when I was like 15, 16 years old. Mm. But the first serious band was uh, together with Ivar in, uh, I think it was the autumn of uh, 1990. And we started a death metal band called Phobia. Mm. <laughs> do you remember meeting Ivar for the first time? Yeah, I do. I mean, uh, we were at the same gig. It was uh, like a kind of a... Uh, 
power metal, thrash metal, speed metal band called uh, Witchhammer. They were from uh, Sapsborg in Norway. And I was on the stage uh, and uh, I, w I was like stage diving. It was a big thing back then. So <laughs> it felt like I, I was at a, at a stadium concert and I just didn't realize that there were only like 50, 60, 70 people there. So I was stage diving and we're, you know, there were only like two or three rows of people. <laughs> so the rest was empty. So I was diving over the, those rows and hit this little, I thought it was a girl actually. I thought. And he almost fainted, and it's like, oh, it's actually a guy, boy. And he was like 11 or 12 years old. And like two years later, I, uh, I met him in the, in the rehearsal place. He was like hired by the drummer to play guitar in our new band, which ended up being called Phobia. Did you recognize him then? I did. I was like, ah, oh, so you are a boy, not a girl. You sound like a girl. <laughs> But, and uh, last time we spoke to Ivar and we asked uh, this question, which I'm about to ask him, so I'm wondering what you're going to say, but you are the two only founding members left in the band. What makes the connection between you two so strong? Well, I mean, we've been playing together for like 25 years, mm -hmm. and uh, after a while we kind of became, I mean, uh, we went from being friends to become brothers, you know, so uh, it's just like... Uh, He's one of the most important uh, people in my life, uh, and vice versa, I guess. So, uh, we know each other so well. I mean, uh, we know when to step on the toes, and we know when to not step on the toes. Mm -hmm. So, we know when to interfere, and we know when to not interfere. And uh, we share the same taste in, uh, in, uh, in uh, weird music. So we're like both music collectors and we, we, we discuss music all the time. I mean, whenever I hear, hear a good song from on the radio or at the friend's place, I will all, always call Eva and I said, you have to check this out. You, have, you just have to check this out. Mm -hmm. And so we do all the time. So I mean, I mean th this is like a musical brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what we do. I mean, this is our lives. I mean, since he was 11, 12 years old, he's been playing with me. Right. So, so, so I'm actually the closest person he can relate to, and vice versa. So, uh, do you have very similar tastes then? Well, somehow, yeah, yeah. But but but, but I mean, uh, he's very good and uh, good at checking out new music. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm like kind of the uh, librarian that goes into popular music from 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 the fifties, sixties, and seventies. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Uh, I think we kind of um, kind of become a, a unity together, you know. Mm. He has his his skills, and I, I have mine, and together we make a strange, weird symbiosis mm. of uh, weirdness. <laughs> what was the last record you bonded over? The last uh, something recently, maybe that that you that he or you went to the other and said, oh, "You have to check this out." Well, uh, the last album we actually checked out together uh, was probably uh, the Devin Townsend project. Because I'm a big prog, uh, prog rock fan and he said, this is actually some new, s new music that you will actually um, embrace. Mm -hmm. And of course I totally agreed because, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I kind of sense what he likes, enjoys, mm -hmm. and uh, the same way around with, with me. I mean, uh, if there's something re reminding him of, of, of King Crimson or even the Beatles, like contemporary music, he, he will give me a call. <laughs> Check this out. And I say, yeah, you're right, as usual. And then, well, you said and then he is more aware of, of the new music and you like to delve more into it. He pays attention to what's going on and uh, basically I'm not. <laughs> but when it comes then to, to, for instance, when it came to In Times, where do you find it? Does inspiration come from both sides of, the, of, the, of, of music, of both eras? In yeah, era? yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, we were like... Uh, very simple. We're uh, music lovers, not uh, genre lovers. Mm. You know, so we, we. I mean, if it's good, it doesn't matter what it, what you call the music. I mean, Bathory 
and the Beatles or and even Elvis are just the same thing for me mm -hmm. and for us. I mean, if it's good, it's good. There are only two genres of music, it's bad music and good music. And this is going to be maybe an impossible question to answer then, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What for you makes good music? That's a very simple uh, answer, energy. Yeah. If there's an evident energy there and you can sense it right away, then it's good. Mm. So, I mean, it's got to be a nerve. I mean, uh, if you, I think it's, it's like the, the, the way you approach music. I mean, if, you go, if you're making a song to some, sound something specific, mm -hmm. it's dead, it's sterile, right. it's undynamic. And that's an impossible way to make good music. If you just, I mean, I mean music is like a, uh, kind of a transcription of, uh, of, your, of your mindset there and then. And so it has to be heartfelt. It has to be energetic and it has, has to be, to be uh, dynamic. And when you write your own music then? It describes your mood. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you try to describe anyone else's mood or mindset, you fail mm -hmm. because you don't know that. It's right. sterile, you know? So, I mean, when I listen to, 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 to radio and music, like, I mean, even from the 90s, it's like programmed drums. It's like uh, a producer that tells you what to do. It's like, that's not music. Mm -hmm. That's just a product. That's just, like, that's just as genuine as a McDonald's burger. It's nothing. Right. It's just a scratching the surface. So, so uh, with this in mind, when you, when you make your own music, do you know when you're on the right path, when you, when you have this connection with, with what you're playing? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if, uh, if we make a song, if, if it reminds us somehow of something we've done before, we just throw it away. I mean, mm. no, no, this is not going to work. This is like, we have to do something new. Mm. It's, it's kind of like, yeah, very simple. I mean, we are constantly trying to make our own contemporary favorite music, mm. something that we would enjoy listening to ourselves. So, uh, if it reminds us of something we have done before, we just like, oh, no, no, no. fuck it, mm -hmm. let's try it again. And then when it came to In Times, and did you listen to, for example, Ritter before you started working on it, or is that is that in your mind? No, I mean, uh, I only listen to uh, my own albums to, uh, I mean, uh, just after the release to to kind of um, memorize the lyrics. Okay. And, uh, well, every once in a while when I have friends over and then they tell me, oh, can't you put on that album you released in 2001? Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, okay, yes, give it a go. But I, I, I don't listen that much to my own music, no. Mm 